Hey guys, welcome to the Max Invest YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a cryptocurrency called Avalanche. Now, Avalanche is one of the cryptocurrencies that is sort of branded as an Ethereum killer, and it has grown in popularity a significant amount in the space. However, it has suffered a pretty big pullback, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing why it suffered a big pullback, what it is, and what its future prospects are. Of course, if you enjoy the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel, and remember nothing in this this video is financial advice and you should always do your own research. So what is Avalanche? Essentially Avalanche is an umbrella platform for decentralized finance applications, financial assets, trading and other services. Avalanche aims to be a global asset exchange allowing anyone to trade any form of asset and control it in a decentralized manner through smart contracts and other technologies. So Avalanche does sound quite a bit like Ethereum in some matters where it wants a lot of DeFi applications to be built off the top of it. However Avalanche does mainly want DeFi to be built on it. It doesn't really look toward any decentralized applications that aren't related to finance. On the other hand, Ethereum is currently a lot broader than Avalanche, so Avalanche is definitely a bit more focused in this aspect, which has positives and negatives to it. Now, Avalanche believe that they have what it takes to be able to solve the blockchain trilemma. They believe that their blockchain is going to be secure, decentralized and scalable, so it will be interesting to see if this actually plays out. Currently, Avalanche is pretty scalable right now. It has pretty high transactions and it is doing pretty well. However, it is not decentralized at its current form and it does want to eventually become decentralized. However, it is currently centralized, which will cause some problems in the near term. Avalanche has three co-founders who all founded the project together and they all do have considerable qualifications and experience in the cryptocurrency space. The Avalanche founders have primarily been concerned with Bitcoin scaling. They say that Bitcoin is a little bit too slow and there's not enough transactions going through the Bitcoin network. This is because Bitcoin is highly decentralized and there are very few upgrades to the Bitcoin network that can actually happen and as a result it is very slow. As such, these individuals believe Avalanche will be able to be used as a means of exchanging all assets on the Avalanche network. This includes the AVAX token and more. With Bitcoin, you can only exchange the asset Bitcoin on the Bitcoin network. That's all Bitcoin allows for. However, on other networks like Ethereum, you can exchange a multitude of assets such as USDC, digital gold, essentially anything can be exchanged on these platforms. And Avalanche really wants to go for a type of finance application where you can exchange any assets with anyone else and decentralized finance will be built off top of it which is very interesting. Now Avalanche uses a proof of stake mechanism. This is pretty different to a lot of the other Ethereum killers that try and use a bit of a different take on the proof of stake consensus mechanism such as proof of history or other types of proof of stakes. Avalanche just uses a pure proof of stake consensus mechanism. Basically, proof of stake is where users will pull their funds together and these funds will secure the network, they'll stake their funds, and this will give users voting rights. However, there does need to be some systems in place to prevent centralization to the people who have the most money, and Avalanche is doing that with a bit of randomness in the staking. Avalanche can process over 400 transactions per second, and this isn't as big as Cardano or Solana or the Binance Smart Chain. However, 400 transactions per second is actually quite a lot. Avalanche validates transactions in less than a second. However, Avalanche is currently relatively centralized and it aims to become more decentralized over time and tries to keep its transactions per second at this high amount. Now, the reason Avalanche isn't doing a thousand plus transactions per second is because it is not completely centralized. There are 660 validators for the Avalanche network, so it is somewhat decentralized. However, users could easily take control of the network, especially the founders of Avalanche, and it is still somewhat centralized. If you compare this to Ethereum, which has 200,000 plus validators on the network, there is quite a big difference, and you can see what has been happening here. Now, Avalanche don't want to brand themselves as an Ethereum killer. Some 
smart contract applications such as Cardano actually do want to be called an Ethereum killer and do want to overtake Ethereum. However, Avalanche sees the future as multi-chain and it does want to work with Ethereum. Avalanche have built an Ethereum bridge just a couple of months ago and Avalanche allowed Ethereum applications to be launched off the network and they are compatible with Ethereum. So Avalanche do see a future where it's going to be working with Ethereum as a separate blockchain and they will be doing their own thing somewhat and there will be a multi-chain future which I do like to see. So Avalanche is not necessarily trying Trying to be an Ethereum killer. However, you should note that a lot of users do like to brand Avalanche as an Ethereum killer, but the Avalanche team don't like to do this themselves. Now, what does Avalanche's future look like? Well, right now, Avalanche is actually pretty new. Avalanche wasn't released that long ago, and they are still looking for a lot of things to be developed on the network. Avalanche are looking to fund a decentralized exchange, a decentralized borrowing and lending platform, and a decentralized stablecoin protocol. So Avalanche are pretty far behind a lot of the other blockchains right now, and this is of course because they are pretty new. The Ethereum equivalents of all of these would be Uniswap for a decentralized exchange, Aave for decentralized borrowing and lending and make a DAO for a decentralized stablecoin protocol. So you can see a lot of blockchains are quite far ahead of Avalanche and this is because Avalanche have a really long and drawn out roadmap. They are currently pretty centralized and they are just getting off the ground. So let's get into the tokenomics of AVAX because AVAX is the token for Avalanche. The AVAX tokens forms the in-house payment method for Avalanche and it is used as, used as a fee on the Avalanche network. So if you ever want to execute a smart contract on the Avalanche network, you will need to pay in the AVAX token. Inherently, you can stake your AVAX because it's a proof of stake network, which will give users passive income. Now, AVAX has a maximum supply of 720 million tokens. A portion of AVAX will also be burnt in transaction fees to offset the new AVAX minting, and only 24% of AVAX is actually circulating. Now, I do believe this is one of the things that is weighing down on Avalanche's price. If only 24% of the token is actually circulating, that means a lot more tokens will be issued. 76% more is still left to be issued, which will way down on the price considerably. Now, the Avalanche token has been hit very, very hard with the recent correction. As you can see, when they released their roadmap in February, Avalanche went all the way from just a couple of dollars up to $60 per AVAX token. It then had a bit of a cool off because this was way too big a move where it corrected around 50% and then began to trade sideways for ages. Of course, with the most recent correction, Avalanches came all the way back down to the $10 range. This means Avalanche is one of the cryptos that has corrected the most. Now, why is this? Why is Avalanche corrected so much? Well, one big reason for it is not that much is being done on Avalanche right now. Avalanche definitely doesn't justify its market cap in the short term, and this is very similar to a lot of other blockchains. In fact, I think the only blockchains right now that justify their market cap in the short term is essentially the Ethereum network, and this is because 99.9% .9 of decentralized applications are launched off the Ethereum network, so the Ethereum network does justify its market capitalization. However, a lot of these other networks don't have that much run off them. Avalanche is one of these, and this can result in very big corrections. However, you must realize the reason these networks actually get their market cap is because of future prospects. Prospects. A lot of people saw how fast Ethereum grew and they do think things like Avalanche can grow this fast. Of course, this leads to a lot of speculation on the price and it's very difficult to price discover for these cryptocurrencies in general and Avalanche has therefore suffered a huge correction. Of course, if you think Avalanche has a very bullish future and you think Avalanche will have a lot of applications on it in the coming years, then this is currently a pretty good price. However, my my overall verdict on this token is that essentially I don't think it is the best of the Ethereum killers. I do think that a lot of other platforms are a lot better than Avalanche right now, and I do think Avalanche's tokenomics aren't actually that good with a very low circulating supply. So personally, I won't be looking into Avalanche for an investment. However, it definitely does look like a good cryptocurrency in general, and it is one to watch out for. Maybe if something changes and a few more applications come onto Avalanche, I will consider 
consider buying some. However, a lot of other platforms like Harmony One and Cardano do look like they're getting those applications right now. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching the video.